All right guys, welcome to another video. Today we're taking a look at the 20 gallon planter tank. As you can see, it's all filled up. Heaters in there, filters in there. Nothing's quite fully set up yet, but there's also water in there. Last time you saw it, it was the dry start method. And we went through that for about six to eight weeks. There's been a little bit of time since then, and I have filled up the tank. So, we've got quite a lot of things to go over in this video. And we've also got to go over the Aquatech of California stuff that the guys over there kindly sent me about four or five weeks ago now. So we're gonna go over that, go over the CO2 paintball tank, go over the bubble counter, the diffuser, the CO2 tubing, everything like that that they so kindly sent me. So firstly, links in the description for Aquatech of California's website. You can also check them out on Amazon and I'll leave some links down there as well. So. Check out the tank, see what's going on. All right, so as you can see, a decent amount has gone on since last time we checked out this tank. And I've just recently got some more stem plants from my local fish store, and I also picked up some nearite snails. So before we get those into the tank, we're going to check out some footage from when I initially flooded the tank. And it pretty much looked the same as this for the most part, besides the stems. So we're going to just look at the initial growth of the Monte Carlo and the dwarf hair grass before we eventually flood it. So let's get it going. So here we are guys, day of flooding been about six seven maybe eight weeks we've been doing the dry start method as you can see we've still got the cling film on the top of the tank a lot of moisture in there and the stem plants that are planted in there have actually been doing decent so really excited to see how they transition once we eventually fill the tank up with water and i'm also pretty interested to see how the monte carlo does but before we completely flood it we're gonna plant some more stems toward the back we've got some more rotala and some more ludwigia we're also going to put these near right snails in the tank that we just got from the local fish store but first we've obviously got to fill it up this little tiny test fill we've just done seem to go pretty well not much of the monte carlo has came back up from the substrate and hopefully that'll continue so let's get this thing flooded What we're going to do for that is set up our little python hose which has been an absolute lifesaver for me since I got that. Definitely beats doing buckets. And then what we are going to do is drop some paper towels in there just so we can disperse the water while we're filling up the tank. Obviously this ADA aqua soil can cloud a little bit so you want to disperse as much water away from that soil as possible. We're then going to dechlorinate the fresh water out of the tap with our ACCR Fritz water conditioner, which is awesome because I think it's like half a teaspoon per 20 gallons and this tank's obviously 20 gallons. So works a charm, let's get filling. Alright, so tank's filled, managed to keep it pretty clear. All we've got to do now is set up the Aquatech of California stuff. So we've got the CO2 tubing, the solenoid and regulator, and then the brass bubble counter. So set that up pretty quick. It's really, really easy. If you're ever interested in doing CO2 in your tanks, I would highly recommend this. I've never used CO2 in my life. All I did was follow the instructions on the manual, and it's been put together like an absolute charm. 10 minutes later, as you can see, we've got the CO2 going. Neo diffuser's doing brilliantly. And overall, this was incredibly easy to set up. You can see the CO2 being released there with the brass bubble counter. There's a little valve that you just turn that literally controls the flow of CO2. And then we've got the CO2 proof tubing going to the tank. 
we've got this all regulated on a simple timer so right now we've got the lights coming on an hour before the co2 does the co2 is then on for seven hours i believe and then the lights come on two hours after the co2 comes off but that's pretty much it guys overall really really happy with this tank all we're going to do now is add the fish the snails and the shrimp first up are the two nearite snails that we just got from the local fish store and we're going to put these two on that top little rock and just have a little bit of fun and see how much they move and see if they'll race down the rock to be honest i can't imagine there's going to be too much movement going on but we'll soon see Alright, so not quite the race that we were looking for, but there's some movement, so that's good, at least they're alive. Now, we are going to move some of the shrimp that we've had in this little 10 gallon holding tank for the last few months while we've been waiting for this to sell. We have got one out of Synclus, two Neon Tetra, and then three Amano shrimp, and we're also going to use all the biological bacteria that's in that filter and put that into the new tank in order to support life pretty much so let's get these guys moved really really excited for these neon tetras Alright guys, so let's just go through the complete setup of this tank. Um, absolutely awful stand that I got from my local fish store, but it was cheap, so got it. 20 gallon Aquion tank that I got at the dollar per gallon sale. Um, rims on there, don't necessarily mind it, would love a rimless one, but for right now this is all we've got, and I think it looks pretty good. We then got the Aquatech of California CO2 regulator with an integrated solenoid for a paintball tank and I'll overlay some footage of that stuff right now. Basically, it's a paintball can that I got from Dick Sporting Goods. I think it was 25 or $30 for the overall paintball can and then it's four or five dollars every time you wanna fill it up. From the people that I've talked to, the Platter Tank being one of them on YouTube, he said that his has lasted about three or four months, so that's what I'm going for. We'll probably end up getting a secondary one just so I can switch it in and out once that time eventually happens. Then we've got the regulator with the solenoid, an absolutely awesome product. Really enables you to control the amount of CO2 that you're putting in the tank. We've then got the bubble counter that Aquateca California sent me separately, which is a brass bubble counter. We've then got the CO2 airline tubing going from there into the tank and then we've got the neo diffuser in the tank that i got from amazon i'll leave a link in the description on that but i think it was about um i think it was about 20 dollars, i believe but the neo diffuser is meant to be the best diffuser on the market right now so just thought i'd get it for lighting we've got this finex 24 7 planted led light Absolutely awesome, cost about $89 I think on Amazon. I'll leave a link down in the description for that, but really sleek looking light. So unbelievably happy with that. For right now, the tank is being filtered by a AquaClear 30. Uh, hang on the back filter. Eventually I'm gonna put a canister 
under the cabinet just to make it a little bit more professional. And then substrate, we have got the ADA Aquasoil. Got a full bag of that, I think it was 20 pounds. Filled it up and then had a little bit left over from my other Planet Tank upstairs. If you wanna check out my most recent video on that, I'll leave it up in the top right hand side of your screen. Now, we've then got some locally sourced rocks that are tested to make sure they were aquarium safe. And then plants, we've got Monte Carlo over the left side. We've got that mixed in with some dwarf hairgrass all along the left hand side and then a little bit of the right hand side at the top. We've then got some S repens in there. There will be some more S repens going in there as well. Just waiting for the S repens to grow out a little bit then I can trim it, replant. Then we've got some Rotala. We've got some, some Ludwigia mixed in there as well, which is kind of the greenish reddish plant. And then we've got some Wisteria in the back right as well. Wisteria is meant to grow a bit like a weed, but we're just gonna keep it in there for right now and just see what happens. Maybe it will outgrow the tank and I'll have to keep trimming it and trimming it and trimming it, which will get annoying. But maybe it'll look all right and I think once these stems grow into the back and come all the way up to the top of the tank, that wisteria will look really good along with that as well. Stocking in the tank, we've got three Amano shrimp that are somewhere, I just saw one of them a minute ago, grazing on a little bit of algae. We've got three neons, that number will be increasing by a lot, probably aiming for about 12 or 15 come the end of the stocking on this tank. We've got two nearite snails, and one of them seems to be making his way down the rock. That's an absolute marathon for that guy. And then we've got one Otto Sinclus, who's right here. So let's take a look at all the fish and all the tank in a little bit more detail. We'll break it down, put some music in there for you. Hopefully you enjoy it. And I, for one, am looking forward to this tank really coming into its own with the CO2 kit helping all these guys grow. So really, really excited for that. Again, thanks a lot to Aquatech of California for sponsoring this whole tank setup and sending me this stuff. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. And we'll see you on the next one.